G'day guys, I'm Cuffy and today I'm going to be making mallets because this one has had it. The idea is to make a handle, something like that, and then make the head something like this, bit of an angle on the face there. Happy days looks like a mushroom, we're making mushroom mallets I guess. <laughs> so first up I need to find material to make the handles out of. Now this is just my claw hammer, there's nothing special about it except that I like it, I like the way that it feels in my hand, it gives me good control, it doesn't twist when I smash something with it because of the shape of the handle, the size of the handle. Now the size of the handle is about 38mm wide by about 25mm thick or an inch and a half by one inch, thereabouts. So that's good, I like that. So I'm going to base my dimensions roughly on that. So here on my bench I've got boards of Jarrah. Now they're a little bit under an inch thick or a little bit less than 25mm thick, so it's a little bit too skinny at the moment. which presents a good opportunity to add a little bit of style while increasing the strength of the timbers by way of getting some offcuts of my Tasmanian oak that I seem to use all day every day. Slip it in between here, bring another one over, over there, creates a bit of a sandwich, we glue them up and that becomes a really strong stable hammer which is very unlikely to break if I was to really slam down on something which I don't really do but if I was by laminating the timbers, it, it resists any splitting or cracking of the timbers because the laminations make it super duper strong. So then with everything machined up and laid out with regards to how I want to glue it up, I'm just going to put a triangle here so I can get it somewhere close to where I want to finish up and then we'll glue it up. Alright, now that these bad boys have been in the clamps overnight, the glue's dry, I just have to clean up one face, make it square, so I'll put that over the jointer. The other face doesn't need to be cleaned up now, because I'll make a jig to taper this handle, and with one square face here, for example, I'll be able to cut that edge there, flip it over, and then cut this edge there. So I only need to joint one edge now to give a good reference for my jig. Alright, so with these docked together, with that one straight reference face, I can put them into this jig that I've just made up, and it's going to cut a slight taper. Now because once I've tapered this edge here, I can't just flip this over because all of that material would be taken away. So I've actually made this jig double sided so I can make the first cut, cut here, turn the entire thing around, and then move this with that first cut here up against this edge here, which is now a greater taper to take into account the missing material, put this in here and cut it again. And I'm just looking at this, if I was to put that down there, that's going to get in the way. That's going to have to come up. So 
because that's going to have a lot of dust being cut right on the edge of that material, it's going to send a lot of dust this way. If I take this one off, and put that one on, because it's got a, a bigger cavity here, it will scavenge it will scavenge more of the airborne dust and put it into my dust extraction system. Hopefully, but let's face it, it's gonna send a lot of dust out this way, is what it is, can't really stop it. So now with all of these handles done, I need to make another jig to, if that's my handle here, I need to make, make a jig to cut this piece in here and there'll be another one on that side there. Something like that. So that piece there and that piece there will be another piece and then I'll put another piece either side to create a sandwich which will go all the way around everything to lock it all together. So the mallet head is in three pieces. So I need to make this piece and this piece, which means cutting this angle in here exactly perfectly to match the leg exactly spot on perfectly. Now I don't know what that angle is, but I can make it perfect without actually figuring out what this angle is. So as you just saw, I've used this jig to cut these angles on these mallet handles. And so this was the first cut and then I flipped it over to the other cut and done that. But well, I know that this base plate of my jig was perfectly square. And this fence here, that's actually kicked on an angle a little bit. I don't know what that angle is. I don't need to know what it is. I simply need to use it. Now because my base plate was square, if I was to rotate this this way, put that up against my square crosscut fence, I know that that angle there is now going to match this leg here. So if I was to just get a random bit of timber, and now I was to hold that there and cut through here. Although it looks square, it is actually off square a little bit. And that would match that mallet handle spot on perfectly like that. The problem there is that there's only a small amount of reference or surface area under there and it becomes a little bit tippy. I could put something under there. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt. So instead, I'll make a second jig to cut these, I don't know, the mallet cheeks, one here and one there. And the way that I'll do that is... So what I did there is I started with a sheet of MDF and squared it up and then I ran a groove down the guts of it parallel to these two long edges. From there I can put in a piece of timber that I found in my workshop which has got a common thickness and it's fairly straight. This groove will pull it into straight anyway 
And so that now becomes a pretty good solid fence. Then I've tapered this back edge here to match the same taper as these handles so that when I put this up against my square fence, this timber fence now is kicked off square some amount of degrees. I don't know how many, but it should be the same amount as these handles here. So then when I get some stock and put it up against my fence there, cut it, that angle, whatever it is, should match my mallet handles perfectly. That's the plan, so let's put it into action and give it a test. All right, so this worked out really well. These joints have pulled up nice and tight. That's excellent. So what I wanna do now is, at the moment, if I was to glue this up like that, that handle can slip out of that joint fairly easily because it comes out this way. It can't actually go forward too much because it gets tighter and tighter as that handle gets fatter and fatter. So what I wanna do is I wanna take away some material up here and here to create what is an effective dovetail key. And when that glues up, I can cut a slot down inside the handle, wedge that out, and that will create a positive lock of the handle inside the mallet head, and that handle and mallet head will never separate ever, ever again. So, let's do that. All right, so I've got my mallet side cheeks, I've got the internal pieces, and I've got the handles. Now I need to make the mallet head separate from the handles for this minute, and so what I need to do is I need to glue up these two pieces to the side pieces with another piece on top like that, and that'll form the mallet head from there 
I can get the handle and slip it in through the back here, poke it out the top so that it, it finishes a little bit proud of the top so that I can flush it off smooth afterwards. Now to do that, I'm gonna get one of these pieces and glue it down to this mallet cheek there like that. And then I need to get this other one and position it appropriately so that the distance from here to here accepts this handle. So what I'll do, because this one's glued down, I'll be able to bring this one up flush to the top there, as close to perfect as I can get it, making sure it's all nice and tight there. Bring this one and glue that one down perfectly like that. And so from there, the handle will just slip out. And then when it slips back in, it'll slip back in, get nice and tight, just as that flushes up at the top. But I actually want this to finish a little bit proud of the surface there so that I can trim that down flush afterwards. So what I'll do there is that because these handles, they're still, it's still a sawn cut. It's still very rough. Well, it's smooth, but it's fairly rough. So I still need to smooth plane that. So what I'll do is I'll put a smooth plane over there which reduces the thickness or the width of these handles just a little bit so that when this slips back in here, it'll get tight and then go a little bit further, giving me that little bit extra to trim off. From there, I can just get another pair, put them on there, on there, so on and so forth, and they'll all be glued down. They're not gonna slip and slide under the uh, lubrication of the glue. And I can get another one of these, put it on top, glue that down, and I can just cut it here and here. There's one mallet head, another mallet head, another mallet head, and they'll all be appropriately spaced to accept these handles spot on perfectly. So it doesn't matter if I get glue there because I'm going to have to shave that down with a hand plane to make this fit afterwards. But the glue inside there is going to be a, a problem so I have to remove it. So that slides in there like that. Once it's got a little bit of pressure it doesn't wobble side to side, that's nice and tight on that face there and there. That's all good. It's flush on the end there, so by the time I shave this down to smooth out those sides, it becomes a little bit thinner. It'll push forward a little bit further, becoming proud at this side here, and I'll be able to smooth that off, looking good. So this process here is going to take quite a long time. So I'll be back when I'm finished. All right, so I've got a few of these done now. So now it's getting, it's getting late in the day, so I will glue these ones up together to form the full sandwich and then I'll just leave it overnight. Alright, so this might look like a lot of clamps, but I'm going to need to put a clamp on every one of these blocks because I can't assume, say for example, if I remove that clamp here, I can't assume that this clamp here and this clamp here will put enough pressure across these three blocks there because the timber is bridging that gap there. So 
It'll probably work, but since I've got the clamps available, I'm just going to use it. So I'm actually going to take this out and put one under, one over. So we'll do that. So then with the handles and the mallet heads roughly to size, I now need to roughly put it together like that. And then I need to cut the mallet head to the exact size at the front and the back here. And so I'm gonna cut it at about a five degree angle here and here. And I wanna make sure that the handle is dead center when I'm finished. So because these are all rough sizes, they're all slightly different. I can't really reference on, on that. But what is common is where the handle is going to be. So I'm going to set up a jig to locate this mallet head against the handle itself. That way I can cut here, flip it over and then cut there and it'll all be dead centre for me. So next up I need to mark in a curve at the bottom just to give it a bit of shape and to do that I've got my 
end cutting jig down on my bench here and I've marked a line straight down the center of that handle, down the center axis of that handle. So that goes on there and because when I glued these inserts in, I haven't actually put a lot of effort into it and I didn't realize I needed to. I've actually just put them in there, I thought, oh, whatever. But some of these inserts or that mortise, for example, instead of running straight square, it's actually kicked that way a little bit, which then kicks the handle off there somewhere. And so when I put this curve in, I actually need to put the curve in in relation to where the handle's going to be. So that's why I'm using this jig here. That's got the center axis there. And then using this little template that I've put a curve at the bottom of it, I've got a square line coming up there. If I get that square line in line with that axis on the handle, I know that I've got it about right. I'm not this way or that way. So it's a little bit more complicated because of the way that I glued in these little insert pieces, but I can get it done anyway. It's just gonna add a little bit of time, a little bit of complexity. So if I just get that lined up as best I can, that's about right there. And there's my curve that I need to cut, and I know that that curve is square to the axis of the handle. Not like this, and not like that.
Perfect. All right, and with those handles fitted, I've gone ahead and profiled one of the handles into the finished shape that I, I think that looks quite good. I've got a chamfer all the way around, which makes it quite nice to hold without it being able to easily twist in your hand. I also round that off the bottom, just because I just wanted it. I just wanted to do it. So that goes in there like that. The only thing I need to change is I need to change where it transitions from the chamfer up into a square. I need to move that up just a little bit because I can feel it when I choke on the handle like that. I can actually feel those horns digging into my hands just a little bit. It's a little bit uncomfortable. So if I move it up just a little bit, a couple more millimeters to get it closer to the bottom of the head, happy days. So let's do that. Alright, so now I need to make those wedges and I need to know what the shape is going to be as that swings out there, I need to know what that V section is going to be. So if I've got my handle here, something like this, and it's like this, like that, like this, like this, like this, like this, something like that. And then as they splay out, like that, I need to know what the shape of this wedge is going to be here. So to figure that out, I can get one of the heads which matches this handle because they've all been individually fitted to each other. And on the inside here, there's the two cuts on these inside insert pieces and it creates that little dovetail shape there. So if I just get a pencil, and bring it in where you can see it. If I was to color that in, just to get some lead pencil markings on it, same on the other side. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's there. 
Then when I put this handle in there, and it rubs up against that pencil mark that I've got there, it'll leave a grey line on the side of that. That'll give me, well, it'll tell me exactly where it's connecting into the handle. So it's in there now. And it also sticks out the top a little bit. So if I just make a mark across the top as to where it's sticking, sticking out. And at the top you can see I've got um, one, two, three, four gaps. So I need one wedge here and one wedge there. And the wedge at the top needs to be the same width as the total of those two gaps. So I know my bandsaw kerf is 0.9 of a millimetre, so I've got 0.9 to begin with. Plus, I've got a little bit more than two millimeters, let's say 2.4 millimeters. So the top of my wedge, the wider part of the wedge, would be 2.4 plus 0.9 is 3.3 millimeters. So it's 3.3 at the top, and I'll write that down. Then I can take this apart. And there you can see that the, I've got a little bit of grey lead and it just stops right here. Same on the other side, I hope. Yep, stops right there. And so you can see that I've actually made sure that when I've cut those slots, I've gone a little bit further, but not too far because I don't want to just put a cut for the hell of it. It's gone a little bit further, so I've got about five mil extra. And I also got that top mark there, which marked the top of the head. So it's these are going to splay out by the 3.3 millimeters at the top, and it will finish at 0.9 millimeters at the bottom because obviously this is a slot that doesn't get any skinnier at the bottom, so it's going to be 3.3 at the top. 0.9 at the bottom and the length of that is going to be whatever this length is which I've got about 43 mil can you see that what's going on here huh. I've got my hands all mixed up oh yeah so it'll be about 43 millimeters so I just need to make a triangle that is 3.3 at the top 0 0.9 at the bottom and 43 millimeters long. Now obviously I'm going to make that longer, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll draw out a triangle, 0 0.9, 43 and 3.3, and then I want to make it a little bit longer because I don't want to have these wedges finish exactly flush. I want them to be a little bit longer so I can tap them in. So then I'll just, from that triangle, I'll run that line up and this line up and then I'll chop it off here and that distance there will be whatever so long as that angle is whatever that needs to be which is whatever it is I don't actually know what the angle is I don't care what the angle is but we want that to be exactly perfect So in my eagerness to make sure that those wedges worked, I've gone ahead and tapped them in just with my dead blow hammer there. And it's all come up really nice. Like it's, it's, there's no gaps anywhere. It's good on the bottom, all looking good there. So now all I have to do is get these wedges out so I can glue it up after I've sanded it. Hopefully I can get these wedges out.
Hmm. I'm regret regretting my decision already. <laughs> Here we go, here we go. <laughs> I win this round. So that should just pop out now, I hope. I think. Yeah, it probably will. Not if it's in the vice. <laughs> Ah, ah. <laughs> we got him. So I'm just about ready to assemble these, but before I do that, I want to sand the bottom of these heads properly because that's just my um, bobbin sander, which is an 80 grit sandpaper. Now I don't want to sand it after I've got the handles in there because I've got to sand in and around the handles a lot harder. So if I take that out, it's easier to sand that now. So if I put this in my vise, I can then sand it nice and easily. I've got two hands free. And when I'm finished, I want this surface to be a nice, even, consistent curve, no lumps and bumps. So to do that, I could just get sandpaper and sand like that. But I've only actually got pressure on my thumb. And when I put pressure here, where there's three pieces all together, it's a nice solid piece, it won't sand anywhere near as much as what it will where it's over the handle, where it's a lot thinner. So I'll be able to do a little bit of sand in here, and as soon as I move to here, it'll do a lot of sanding. So that's no good, that'll leave a little divot. So to get around that, get yourself a stick that easily conforms to the shape. And by doing that, if I put my sandpaper beneath it, it spreads the pressure of my two fingers across the entire stick width length, and it won't give any localized depressions. It will actually fair out any high spots. So, now because it's not actually stuck to the stick, I just have to pull backwards and then lift up and start again. And that's got it, that's pretty smooth. I'll just spin this around and do the same thing from the other direction. Nice. So this is now two grits, 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 Alright, so now it's time to glue him up. Got plenty of glue inside here. Line up my number 
on the end of that there with the number on there. Hopefully everything just works perfectly. Give it a good old crack at the bottom. If you hear it, if you heard the sound change, that's a good sign. Clean up some of the glue off the bottom. Just to stop it from running everywhere. Put the handle in the vise. Crank him down. Plenty of glue down there. Plenty of glue down there. Plenty of glue, glue there. Glue on the wedges. And that's one gluey mess. I'll just leave it like that, it's good enough. Happy days. 25 to go. All right, so I've got these all glued up. There's 25 of them there. Now I've gone ahead and flattened off the top of that one there, as you can see, and it's come up nice and tight. It's really good. And I actually quite like the way that that looks. It looks quite nice. I like it. But that wasn't my original idea. My original idea was to curve the top like this one here. I've also smoothed out the top there like that. That was my original idea. Now, I quite like them both. I have no real preference one way or the other, but I put it to the guys on Facebook and Instagram, which ones do you guys like? Because I put up a photo roughly like that. Which one do you like? Do you like the round one? Or do you like the flat one? Now, ideally I would have got a majority decision one way or the other, an overwhelming majority decision. But it was about 50-50. It was a little bit more for the flat. They preferred the flat one over the round one. So what I'll do, because I'm making 25 of these, I'm going to make 10 of them round and the remaining 15 flat. So I think that covers all bases. But either way, they're pretty much the same. The, the round one, because I've removed some material here and here, this one's going to be slightly lighter than this one. So I think the head of this would be about 500 grams, whereas the head on this one would be about 550 grams. Not a huge difference, but it's there. It, it is a difference. So first things first, because I can always turn a flat one into a round one, I'm gonna flatten off the tops first. If I find any weird things going on with any one of these, I can always turn that one into a round one later on such as I noticed on one of them, this one here, if I get my face out of there, you see that's all peeled away on that corner there. This one is definitely going to be a round one. I know that for sure, because what happens is when I round that across there, all of that gets cut off and I'm left with nothing but um, A grade quality product. So I'll flatten off these first, then I'll have a look at them and whatever I can whatever garbage like this that I can avoid by rounding them. Happy days, I'll do that. Otherwise, it becomes a second, but I don't suspect I'll have any, I don't suspect I'll have any seconds here. So, to flatten these off, keeping in mind that everything that I've done so far, I've cut those two ends with regards to that handle. I've made that jig wherever it is. So they're in line with the handle itself. I want the top to be flattened in relation to being what square to the center axis of the handle. So to do that, I want to reference off the side of this handle, which is angled a little bit. I don't know what the angle is, but it doesn't really matter. Now, this fence here, I can swing this in and out on an angle if I wanted to, but I like to keep it square because Square is square, and close to square is just not square. So 
I like to keep it square because I know that it's currently square. I've just said, I've just said square a million times. So instead of moving the fence, I created a little jig with two parallel edges. If I was to bring this up against my fence here, that edge here would still be square to the saw blade. But I actually need to kick that off a little bit so that when I connect into the handle there, this edge here is actually um, square to the blade. So there's a gap here, right? So what I do is I put a screw in one end of it. I've got a little bit of tape on there to protect my aluminium fence, but there's a screw in there and I can pull that screw out or wind it in. And when it connects one point here and it butts up against this end of the fence, it's now on an angle. I don't know what the angle is, but I've simply set it up so that when this sits up against that handle there, it butts into the saw blade there. That's now cutting um, parallel to the top edge of the mallets. Happy days. The only thing I need to worry about is it's pretty easy to press down on that handle there which tilts it. So I'll get a block of timber just to stop me from pressing down on it. And from there we can simply zip them through.
So now that I've got 10 of them roughly coated with a bit of oil, I'm going to pick one up, get myself a clean dry rag and wipe off any of the excess oil as best I can. And then we'll go and put it in my drying rack and let him dry. Alright, and just like that, I've got three coats of that antique oil from Minwax on here, plus a coat of wax on there. The wax gives it a nice sheen, a beautiful feel, like everything's just super smooth. You could swing that all day, no dramas at all. Now the head itself is about 500 grams, the handle is about 150 grams, bringing it, bring it up to about 650 grams all up, but most of the weight's in the head, and so you can, you can really slam down on it fairly effortlessly because once you've, get, once you've got that much weight moving, it simply stops moving as soon as it hits something kind of solid. Ideally it would be a chisel because that's getting pretty sore. <laughs> but that was a flat one. This is a round one. Quite like that one too. Now with regards to the flat one and the round one, the weights are basically the same. Even though this has less material in it and the the striking face is slightly smaller because I've removed some material to make it round on top. They basically weigh the same. There's a very random selection of weights within here simply because timber is different. Some of it's denser, some of it's less dense, some of it's heavier, some of it's lighter. So some of these round ones with less material actually weigh more than the flat ones. But they're all roughly around the 650 gram, the 750, 700 gram mark. So. If you want one of those, you can purchase one of these from my website while stocks last. And if they fly at the door fast enough, I might even make some more. Not this year, but maybe next year. So, thanks for watching and until the next one, I'll catch you later. What happens when you hit two hammers together? We can't sell them afterwards, so we don't do that. Gently, gently, gently.